Hi everyone and welcome for today's video. Today we are making something really cool. Cool in terms of ice cold. <laughs> Do we know those NASA photos filmed from high up in the sky above Earth and you have these mountain and river areas down there which are really looking feathered into each other? I really love this concept. And in this video here I'm going to make something like that but for an Arctic scene. So I wanted to achieve somewhat really high contrast colors and in the very beginning I decided for only two colors, which is my phthalo cyanine blue and white. But well, when I was mixing my colors and had everything ready and set, I thought this might need a third one. You might need a third blue color. And I was lost again. So although I wanted to use only these two, I mixed up a third color, which was a metallic turquoise color. And I thought this might add a little of interest to the entire piece, because this looks a bit like the transition water color between ice and deep water. I don't know. <laughs> Make up your own mind while I am working on this and just follow along, see what I'm doing. And again, I need to confess what else can be a better technique to achieve this than a ring pour? And I know, yes, I'm really obsessed with the ring pours currently and I did so many more, which you will have to see in the future as well. <laughs> and I really hope you don't mind. Um, this concept is so versatile and I really love what you can make of it and how many different styles I can achieve with this technique. So I'm still experimenting, but I really love the results that I've gotten so far, which you don't know yet, but you will see in the future, of course. So as you can see, the canvas that I'm using is a reused one, so a pour that did not turn out as I wanted. So I just put a layer of gesso over it, let it dry, and then it was ready to be used again. And yeah, then basically everything went as planned as I usually do. Paints were mixed as the same consistency as I always use, and I put them all into my measuring cup. I layered them to my best knowledge and then just started pouring. I did add a layer of pure white first to a part of the canvas just to allow the paint to flow easier. And just before I started pouring I elevated the edge where I was pouring on just to make the paint flow over the canvas already while I am pouring. So this is a bit a different technique than I normally used when I just make the ring pour and pour everything in the puddle and then just tilt everything. So in this case the paint already was able to flow around and I wanted to achieve more of these feather looks. Not like a ring, but somewhat similar to it. So I wanted it to look more like a geographical structure and I kind of achieved the look I think and I was pretty happy with the result. So it looked like little fjords covered in ice or something. Do you call it fjords by the way? The things in Sweden? <laughs> Where the ships can go in and such? Yeah, we call it fjords. Um, yeah, the blue that you are seeing here is still in the wet phase, of course, it just poured it. <laughs> and this one is going to dry really, really dark. 
So for those of you who follow me longer already know the blue that I'm using. It looks very much lighter than it does when it's dry. And of course, as usual, I will show you the end result in the end. So the moving and tilting went pretty quickly until I was happy with the result that I got. By only using these three colors, there was no much of popping highlights, so to speak. I did have the highlights where I wanted them to be, like at the ice-covered and snow-covered areas, which looked really great. And you will see the close-ups in the end as well, which I really, really love. And for those of you who are so much into blues as I am, <sighs> I really love this one. So I will just let you look at it for a while and then I continue when I do the varnish. Here you can see the final result with the right colors. Isn't it beautiful? I really, really, really love the result. And it looks like I wanted it to look, to be honest. So I perhaps would have loved the blue area to be larger, but if I would have tilted it more, it would have stretched more and probably ruined the look of the entire thing. So this is really like a screenshot filmed up from sky over the Arctic. What, what do you think? Please leave me a comment down below if you actually can see the same as I do or if you see something completely different and if you love the blue as much as I do. So when everything was dried and I have to let it dry slowly because it was a reused canvas and if you have done this as well you might have noticed that when you have a reused canvas and you want to dry your paints quicker and put it someplace warm your paints are likely to crack if you are unhappy. Reason behind, because of the water which cannot soak into the fabric anymore, the paint can only dry from above. So if we have a fresh ready from the package canvas and you pour over it, the water from the paint itself can soak into the fabric and evaporate from down below as well and from above. And this is the best way for paints to dry actually. So this is the most likely version of not ending up having cracks in your paint. But if you have a reused canvas, so your surface is already waterproof sealed from the first layer and you pour over it, you can only have the water evaporate from above. Of course. And this will of course increase the stress onto your paints. So if you have a really warm area where this is drying and much water can evaporate from the very top of the paint, so much quicker than the water from lower layers can rise to the top to dry as well, you might end up having some cracks and paint ripping apart. So this is just something to keep in mind. And yeah, when it comes to the varnish, as I always tell you, I love the Liquitex varnish, but this is something everyone can decide on its own, of course. And I do have a varnishing sealing video coming in the near future, where I show all the techniques that I know of, how to seal a painting. So different kinds of varnishes or resin coats, and what you can do with the regular varnish to achieve a resin look somewhat as well if you don't like to work in resin. So this here again is the Liquitex and I just used a very tiny brush again. I know I should get a larger one and I ordered some. They should arrive in the next week and I also got myself a sponge brush which I've never used before but it works pretty cool on the larger artworks as well. So you will see me having a larger brush to varnish my project very very soon in the videos coming. So yeah stay tuned. <laughs> And the fun thing, when I apply the varnish to this blue, it gets in a way reacted, so it gets lighter again, which looks always strange because of the different shades and you can see the brush strokes. And when it's dry, everything is back to dark. So yeah, it's really fun to watch. And this is actually everything that I did for this piece. If you are asking, there was no silicone involved at all, so nothing in there. And I couldn't stop myself, I did add some glitter to the water area, just to make it more glittery shiny, like there were waves on the water. So when you hover over the picture and have a look at it from different angles, it sparkles a bit, like as if you would watch from, from space. Yeah, thank you so much for watching, and yeah, I hope you liked the end result as much as I did. 
And as usual, if you have any questions, please leave me down below in the comment box. My social media and materials are all linked down below in the description. And if you're new to my channel and have not subscribed yet, I would love you to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to not miss out on any new stuff that is coming weekly. A couple of times weekly, actually. Yeah, so if you enjoyed watching, just make sure to return to my channel as soon as you can. And also have a look at the other stuff that is already there. So, once more, thank you for your time, thank you for watching, and other than that, I wish you a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>